raincoats. I've got about 12 raincoats. Um, I think I probably need 12 raincoats. I'm not going to be part of many of them. I might only wear one of them. I tend to slip on an old Burberry, funnily enough. A lot of people think Burberry invented the raincoat. They didn't. They invented gabardine, which all credit to them, but um, the first trench coat in this style was made for soldiers in the trenches and it had lots of little military things going on. You see, um, the epaulets, you have your officer's pips on the uh, epaulets here. Now, on the belt, you get little D rings which they still put on these days. That was for your gun and anything else you might want to hang on there. But usually, there would be a panel here on, panel, on uh, trench coats, a little D ring here that would be for the whistle when they're going over the top. Now this is a Grenfell raincoat. This is the holy grail of raincoats. This is the best raincoat in the world. And it's a trench coat, and it's got a Melton lining in it. This was the most expensive raincoat you could buy. I'll probably never wear this. I don't like the uh, trench coats. Awfully, a bit too fussy for me, but they're, they're popular. Uh, what I prefer, the one I sort of slip on if it actually is raining, and I've got it handy, it's an old Burberry one, and uh, I sort of favour this tonic green colour. I mean, this is just no nonsense, nothing, no unnecessary stuff, just something that keeps you dry. Some of my customers sometimes put their hands in the pocket and think there's a hole or something. Uh, no, that, that's uh, any decent race coat has this result. When you do it up and it's raining, and then you get to your car and you think, oh, where's my car keys? Well, they're in my trouser pocket. That's so that you can get your inside pockets without having to undo the, uh, the, the raincoat. This is a nice old, Grenf uh, nice old Burberry one, when Burberry still was the real company, spelt Burberries with an S on the end. And when their, uh, their main shop in London, didn't say Burberries, but a Scotch house. If you see a Scotch house uh, raincoat, that was the big Burberry shop. When they suddenly got successful in the fashion business, they changed the name to Burberry, which just sounds a bit more international and cool, and they changed the Scotch House shop into the Burberry flagship store. Uh, lovely Aqua Studium one here again, uh, with a zip-out lining. These are just fantastic. These are, uh, again, nice and simple to wear. The zip-out lining is just a nice thing to have in winter, because it's as warm as an overcoat. Now, I think the film was the Ipcrest file. Uh, there's a picture, I think, for the, uh, the film poster with Michael Caine wearing a, I can excuse me, a Burberry raincoat. But it just came about there. And they became really fashionable. There. Everybody wanted them. Quite often people come into the shop and say, I've got those Michael Caine ones. They were fine until you found out when you actually went out in the rain, being a raincoat and waterproof, rain would run down the coat absolutely soaked your knees and you'd get a big soaked patch on your trousers like that. So a raincoat has to be past your knees, really, if it's going to be any good at all. I love duffel coats. There's absolutely nothing as comfortable as a duffel coat. Surprising because they can be sort of open and yet they're still warm. The pockets are in exactly the right place to just stick your hands in them, especially when you've got phones and all that sort of stuff these days. It's such an incredibly well thought out, simple garment. Uh, originally, I think the first we saw them was for the British Navy. Uh, you'll see sort of captains and admirals on battleships wearing them with a big uh, polar neck white uh, submariner's jersey. But there's different makers, um, and for me, <laughs> the only maker, if I'm going to own a duffel coat myself, and I think I've got three, this make, uh, Glover All, is just head and shoulders above all the others. Now suddenly, duffel coats have become incredibly fashionable, uh, and so people like Ralph Lauren, and I think Yves Saint Laurent, making duffel coats. Guarantee, if it's fashion people making them, they're going to be rubbish. They're not going to stand up. I mean, I've seen duffel coats from fashion companies like uh, Laura Ashley and, and Monsoon and people, and 
day you just wouldn't wear them on a battleship. But these glove roll coats are absolutely fabulous as long as they continue to make them like this. Now, uh, they've nicked a lot of things from different people. Uh, the, the fabric, I think, is the reason they're called duffel coats. There's a town in Belgium that used to make the fabric, it's called Duffel. I think I'm right on that. These toggles, I think we nicked this from China. Uh, on Chinese garments, they had a, a sort of lot in shape fastening that worked like this duffel coat. Uh, I don't know if it's come from anywhere else, but um, uh, it's such a fantastic garment. There's a lot of adjustment in the hood. You can actually bring it down close to your scalp if you're really seriously cold. Never actually used that. See, it's got a piece of elastic in it as well. Now, there are duffel coats from other manufacturers that I've said, and there's two or three manufacturers that claim to have made the original duffel coat and claim to be the, the, the governors, but I see an awful lot, and I've worn a lot of these. Only glove roll ones. I think this couple is, I mean, I might be wrong, it might be as big as Burberry soon because they've started making a lot of other garments. They do a wax, uh, short duffel coat is right and uh, I recently had through my hands a duffel coat but in white cotton canvas so you've got a summer duffel coat but it's quite chic and smart so maybe uh, I only hope that they don't go the same way as RM Williams and Bell Staff and these companies that once made super workwear and incredibly durable garments and then as soon as they become a fashion company the accountants come in and say oh we can make these cheaper you know we can use cheaper materials. I mean, Ralph Lauren, I, they must have a rule where they just won't spend more than about $20 on any material they buy because it's very photogenic stuff, but you get a tweed suit from Ralph Lauren, uh, it's not gonna last very long. Gentlemen, I give you the car coat. Now these pretty much didn't exist until suddenly the position you sat down in your car stopped being like, like this and sort of started being more like this. And a long Chesterfield style overcoat would pull you down and tug you all over the place. So some Bryce Park came up with the car coat with a shorter bag. Now they weren't exactly the most stylish thing. If you had a two-seat sports car, only Healy 3000, you would have a sheepskin, and they were pretty cool. But the car coat, well, the young tearaways wouldn't wear them, the teddy boys wouldn't wear them really. It was pretty much old man's kit, but they'd look pretty cool now. And this is just typical of your car coat. A lot were made by uh, uh, tailoring companies like Dunn uh, to sell as a ready-to-wear thing. Yeah, this is made by Dunn. Uh, from that label, I'd say this one's probably late 50s, uh, 1960s, I've had quite a few of these through my hands. It's a lovely thing, it's all natural materials. Now it looks quite stylish, but when the Beatles were happening, you didn't want to be walking around in a car coat. But, of course, a lot of people were stuck with their long overcoats that didn't really work in the MGA. So a lot of overcoats at that time were shortened. You tell the ones that have been shortened, because maybe in haste, they just locked the bottom off and then realised that maybe uh, the, the button was quite close to the bottom uh, and the, uh, it would leave the vent at the back very, very short indeed. I mean, there's little point in that three inch vent there. And this would have been uh, a, a good six inches longer, I'd say. There's another one here. These are lovely coats. They've been made by uh, high street tailors and shortened for use in cars that you lie down in. Uh, this one's a lovely uh, John Collier coat and again it, it's been short and you've got a much shorter vent there. I think this would have been quite an elegant garment when it was uh, its original length. Super material. Actually it does, does look pretty good now uh, but this this would have uh, come down to my knees. This is a really nice coat. This is a bit. <laughs> 